All right, so Jagex has made some changes to the item and combat adjustments for Project Rebalance. Let's have a look. How far down are we going? Is it the whole blog, or where does it stop? It stops here, right? To say this set of changes sparked a lot of discussion, we'll be putting it lightly, of course. Let's have a look. I haven't actually looked into a lot of people's opinions on this. However, on Twitter, I am very shocked to see how many people support the occult nerf, but hate the Void Waker nerf that they're bringing. That is very surprising to me, that people think that... The Void Waker nerf is worse than the Occult one. Let's have a look. Magic setups outside of high-end endgame gear were hit disproportionately hard by the nerf of the Occult necklace. Absolutely. Additionally, there were concerns expressed about the balance between brackets and PvP with how much power limited de defense builds were losing compared to others. True. Alright. We've rigged some numbers and added more equipment into the mix. I hope here is, the, is that power levels for many players should stay around or slightly above where they were previously but uh, that it's made up of more diverse sources and encourages meaningful upgrades across the... But basically, look, the reason the Occult Necklace nerf is really here is because gatekeeping, endgame morons were upset with how powerful the 10% is compared to every other piece of mage gear in the game, and they don't like that it's only 800k. People correlate money with damage and think, well, these two can't be... You can't have low cost with high damage. That doesn't make sense. Abyssal Whip, rada rada rada. So that's why there's really this problem. So let's have a look. They're adding... Um, they're adding 1% to Aaron pieces, which is big. They're adding 1% to Elder Chaos Druid pieces, which is big. 1% to Bloom. So basically everything that isn't Mystic, is getting damage. Thank you, John. I appreciate the 645. You're a champion. Thank you. Bloodbark is getting 1%. God damn. Okay. That's... That's unironically fucking massive, for those that don't realize. That's big. The Aaron's 1% is pretty big. I like that. And Central Pieces nerfed by 1%. Now 3% each? Up from 2%? Down from 4 I don't like that, really. Because that brings us back to the same discussion, that Aaron's... I, look, this is my opinion. I think Ancestral and Arams are too close together in terms of damage and accuracy. I think Aram, I think Ancestral needs to be more accurate. And that 4% actually would have been a lot nicer too. Because the, the gap is too small. That's why Virtus barely fits. 3% is kind of shit. Especially if... Is Virtus still going to give 2%? That's not very good, man. That, I, I, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like 4% was kind of appropriate on the Ancestral. 9% versus 3%, I still I think that's still fair. Well, it was 6% versus 0% before. I think that's fine. But Aram's is still incredibly... It's almost as accurate as Ancestral. The accuracy is insane. Does magic accuracy actually do all that much? Absolutely magic accuracy does that much. Why do you think the Shadow is the most accurate weapon in the game? The, the Shadow's accuracy is fucking insane, dude. Of course accuracy does much. Absolutely, fucking lootly it does. For sure. Absolutely. The 1% coming from Blood Bark is going to be huge, especially when using Ancient Blood Spells. It's going to be big in PvP. I've seen something uh, that I think they have looked over. I haven't had a look yet. 13% post, 13% pre is the entire nerf uh, just about Ancestral. No. Virtus and Ancestral are much closer. Well, yeah, Virtus, Virtus and Ancestral, of course, it's mu they're much closer. But the gap between Arams and Ancestral is so small that Virtus had no choice but to be pretty much Ancestral, right? Ancestral should be higher. It should be far better. But the Shadow makes that kind of impossible now without busting that even more, unless they nerf the Shadow and buff Ancestral to bring it to where it kind of would be already. That's what I would do. Ancestral Occult is unchanged pre and post nerf. Yes, I know. They did my suggestion. Aaron's 1%, Mystic might 2% hype. Oh man, they saw Harrison and they were like, God damn. Eternal Boots, 2%. Uh, okay, fair. Mystic might 2%, Law 1%, yeah, makes sense. Mage Book, 2%. That's interesting. Ward, 2%. Ancient Wyvern Shield, 2%. Arcane Spirit Shield, 3%. What's the Elite in this ward? 5%? That is fucking big. 0.5% to the Seer's Ring and Seer's Ring Eye. Elite Void Mage set up to 5%. Mmm. Mmm. Right. That's... Yeah, why 0.5% on the Seer's and Seer's Eye, not 1%? Uh, probably just to keep, probably stop, I don't know, maybe there's some power creep they're worried about. What does the, what does the Magus ring give? That gives like 3%, doesn't it, or something? The, I don't know what the ring gives. So Void Mage is 15%, no, no, Void Mage is 5% now. It's plus 2.5% on top of the 2.5% already gives. I mean, look. Okay, Spirit Shield with Illidanus Ward will make it 6. Will it be 6? 
We'd also like to clarify that Virtus Rose would have a 15% boost to Ancient Magic's often 12%. This boost is made up of two stats, the, uh, the base magic and then the added magic bonus for Ancients, increasing its base damage by 3%. Okay. Spirit, is it 10% accuracy? No, it, it's it's 125% accuracy, isn't it, with the Void Mage? But 2.5% damage? Elidness is 3% at the moment. Oh, okay, so they might put the 3 and 3 together rather than making it 5. I don't know. They haven't said they're going to buff the, the final ward. So maybe that stays at five percent still. Not sure, but that that being the the most powerful of the offhands makes perfect sense. Um, I really feel like they probably should have kept ancestral at four percent, um, or they should make ancestral like even if it's five extra accuracy per piece, that's fine. Win a board award, fuck me, uh, that shit got shot up four mil, very nice. Okay, here's a handy summary image of, of everything that's had the magic damage increased. Okay, so um, everything's getting one percent except 0.5% here on the ring. Everything here is getting 2% increase and a 3% increase uh, with 5% in total on the void and 4% over here on the uh, the prayer. All right, all robes are per piece for hat, top and legs. Yeah, so boots and gloves don't count, which is important. Uh, okay, fair enough. Some at glance examples uh, of some piece of gear. This is how it should stack up. Mystic Might, Eternal Boots, Mage Book, Arams, Occult plus 3% compared to live game. Augury Eternal Boots, Ancestral Occult, plus 3% compared to Light Game. Okay. So you're getting a 3% magic damage buff across the game entirely, basically. Uh, Timigan Shadow only gains 1% over Live Game since it loses 3% from gear, having uh, after having its passive effect applied and gains 4% from accuracy, which is not boosted by its passive. Understandable. Mystic Mike, Elder Chaos Roads, Mage Book, and Occult is plus 1% compared to Live Game. Okay, so everyone, magic in general is getting a full buff. Fair enough. But you got to be wearing every single piece of fucking gear. Is the ancestral occult weaker then? No. Yes, yes. If you just have ancestral and occult, it, yes, it is weaker now. The extra, the the extra damage from the occult that went to the ancestral is has moved to off hands and and boots. So a two, so you've lost three percent. So you got ten percent from the occult. You lose six percent. You gain three percent onto ancestrals, then you get two percent on your boots. And you get 2% on an offhand. So you're actually getting more back. Or 3% on your offhand here with the Spirit Shield. Um, half a percent on your ring. But if you already have the uh, upgraded Aledinus Ward, you are actually losing part of that 10% overall. You're losing 1%, I think, still. Fortified Ward is 5%, so you reckon they'll go to 6 or 8? I don't know yet. They haven't said anything. They might leave it at 5, to be honest. I'm not sure. Uh, Alright, so let's have a look. The minimum hit feedback. Reducing max hits across the game to introduce minimum hit improvements for new players doesn't feel great. Also, Dragon Claws and the Scythe were worse off with the proposal due to how they handle rounding. Makes sense. Alright, so instead, any damage roll that would be a 0 will be clamped up to a 1. Max hits would be left unchanged from where they are in the live game. Okay, this achieves our early game goals. Alright. Uh, making combat feel better doesn't lead to a significant noticeable DPS uh, increase. Okay, so... If your max hit is 3, your damage distribution will be 1, 1, 2, 3, rather than 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, alright. Slight buff to DPS in the very early stage of the game. Much less impactful uh, as max hits increase, so we uh, steer clear of endgame concerns. Fair enough. You'll still be able to miss, uh, so you'll still have the occasional 0, especially against high DPS NPCs or in the very early stages of the game. This also means that your diamond bolts, when you know when you diamond bolt procs, and um, you hit a 0, not anymore. That's good. Void Waker special attack. Void Waker's proposed special attack leaves it with barely any use cases compared to the Zara Crossbow Dragon Claws. Uh, I mean, I don't think so, but fair enough. So instead of giving it, they, they propose 200% accuracy on the special attack, which is the same as 3x accuracy. They'd like to go to 400%, which is five times accuracy. This means that the Void Waker remains an extremely accurate weapon and retains more of its current use cases, but allows, to use, allows us to design NPCs in the future that might feature extremely high slash defense and open the door for DPS special attacks that focus on other melee styles like Stab and Crush. Look, I'm not against them making it fucking 400% over 200%. That's totally fine with me. Sure. Whatever. He told me the Sober Axe is now viable in the game. I couldn't fucking tell you, man. Nightmare. The time to complete for Sunny and Nightmare particularly. The Inquisitor's armor set is still extremely long. So here's the changes. The Man, they're changing everything, eh? Blood to Approach rolling out dupe protection for Inquisitor's armor pieces only. Okay. The pros and cons of the protection system, so we want to be clear this is something we'll explore on an extremely case-by-case -case basis and not something we're looking to roll out on everything. For pros, the time to complete for collection loggers and irons goes down, but the number of uniques entering the game remains unchanged. It doesn't adversely impact the economy for mains. 
Systems like this allow us to make stuff that's really rare and worth getting excited about without making a complete armor set or log slot feel like a month's long slog. Yeah, I hate getting five pairs of Bandos boots before I get one BCP. That is shit, so that, I like that. Oh, here we go, look at this. Primary concern is the system uh, like this in other places fundamentally change how players interact with their grinds. For example, if General Garage had dirt protection for all three uh, armor pieces, would you still be trying to make money there if you knew your next piece was boots? You would not. Systems like this can dis disincentivize players to engage with content as money makers or on a more iron-esque journey if the next unique is already known. Well, my next uniques are fucking tacit if they introduce that. Uh, do any other ma mage armors besides Brimstone and Arams have a passive that increases damage? I really don't see why mage armors are so bland and treated as stat sticks. I wouldn't have a clue, man. Makes sense to not just completely ignore accuracy, just make it very high. Yeah, exactly. The need to improve Gobble's Dungeon? How would you improve Gobble's Dungeon? In the case of Inquisitor's armor set, those piece, the pieces remain similar value to each other for the time being, and we feel as the, the most direct application is Nightmare Uniques, so we'd be willing to experiment with this while leaving the orbs as exceptionally rare flex items. Yeah, to be honest, look, I don't think people are grinding the Nightmare regardless of this update. Um, so, like, I, I don't see mains going to the Nightmare for money when they have opportunities like Nex and TOA and Theatre of Blood. So, I, I, I think... This is this is purely helping out Iron Man, right? At the end of the day, and I I mean, fuck Iron Man, but also like it's not really hurting, so why not? The Inquisitor's Mace buff being dependent on a full set doesn't help its utility on Slayer tasks. Okay, fair enough. Including boss tasks like Cerberus and Grotesque Guardians. We're updating our proposal for this, similar to what we've done with Crystal. Awesome. So instead of re relying on the full set, each piece of Inquisitor's armor will provide 2.5% damage and accuracy when in conjunction with Inquisitor's mace, meaning you can still benefit from this buff while on task. Okay, that's awesome. So it's it's not a... Okay, that's for those that don't understand. I, I believe at the moment with um, with Inquisitor's, it's like a small... It's, a, it's like your uh, XP boost with like mining, your Prospector's outfit. It's a small boost, small boost, and if you have all three, then there's a big boost on top. Now it's like... Chris Lama where it's a it's a set bonus per piece regardless of gender. So that's massive. That means you can use it with Slayer and that's big. Alright, the Elder Mall's special attack accuracy is still pretty low and not much better than Dragon Warhammer. Alright, we'd like to give 25% accuracy on the special attack to the Elder Mall. Cool. Will it one can, can we get a guaranteed hit on Tecton still? Like the like the Dragon Warhammer. It makes sense to not have it on the Dragon Warhammer personally, but sure, why not? Um, does that make it better than the Dragon Warhammer now? I, I don't know. What, what does the Dragon... Does, does Dragon Warhammer increase accuracy with the spec? Where is it? It's, uh... 50% more damage while lowering the target's current defense by 30%. It doesn't actually affect the accuracy of the hit, though. So you're looking at plus 95... Plus 28, what's that? That's plus 123 versus... Where are the stats? So the, the Elder Maul is more accurate. I knew it was, regardless. Okay, that makes sense. So you're looking at... You're more accurate with the Elder Maul. They're going to add 25% on top of that. Which is, what, an extra an extra 30? It's going to be like 165, roughly. One, on the way to 170. Crush with the spec. That's not bad. Accuracy from Defender, I think. Well, the Defender plus the Warhammer doesn't beat the Elder Maul still. It already was better. Yeah, well, it says not much better than Dragon Warhammer. Fair enough. Okay, so the spec's going to be better and it's going to be more accurate. That's really good. I haven't watched Fallout yet, no. Okay. Same attack speed as well. Yeah, I mean, the Elder Maul being better than Dragon Warhammer is huge. Makes sense. Fair enough. Jamal definitely is still hoarding Elder Maul's. Uh, maybe. Wouldn't have a clue. Alright, some players wanted clarity on how baboons, shamans, volatiles, and cursed baboons would be impacted. Okay. Uh, the likes of Shamans, Volatiles, and Curse are treated like regular NPCs with no style-specific max hit weaknesses. Okay. Though some of you jumped into the beta and tried this one out, we'd like to clarify that the HP for three NPC for these NPCs no longer scales with the raid level, freezing you up to zoom to your heart's content. Or oh, freeing you up to zoom to your heart's content. Right. We're still on the lookout for more feedback. Okay, so they're not actually changing Shamans, Volatiles, or Curse Baboons. They're just they're staying as they fucking are. Fair enough. This update is not live yet, no. Okay. And then this is back to the normal blog. So that, that's the update there, basically. The monkeys aren't changing. Um, the Elder Maul is going to be more accurate with the spec. 
Inquisitors is going to be better for Slayer tasks. Nightmare is going to be better for not going dry. Void Waker is getting stronger. Uh, the minimum hit change is just better in general. Shamans have less HP now or what? No, they just won't get the HP buff. I think they'll just stay the same. I don't think they're changing. The maze change is interesting. I think it's fine. I like that they're putting damage on arams and boots and offhands and stuff. Um, I don't like that the Ancestrals dropped from 3 to 4%. I don't have any Ancestral yet, but I, I think um, that that's a bit of a shame. But, I mean, at the end of the day, who the fuck am I to uh, complain or care? It's all it's all a buff regardless of gender. It's not bad. The Void buff is big. Not really. Void Mage is still out of horseshit. Like, you'll do better with just wearing Arams, especially with Arams being 3%. Um, you're probably better off still not using Void Mage anywhere in your life unless you have downs. So, I, th I think you'll be fine outside of that. The, the fact that they're buffing Arams is honestly big. Like, that that's probably the biggest part of this update because Arams is so... It, it's everywhere, right? Everyone's got Arams. Everyone uses Arams if they can't get Ancestral. Your incentive to farm Ancestral is not as big now. Yes, it's still 2% higher per piece, but having a magic damage bonus already with the Shadow now... Ar Arams with a Shadow, is that's 9% now, right? So don't have Arams and Basin Slot modes of Mystic? Well, then get to Barrows, dude, because you're about to get a fucking juicy buff. Like... That's that's nine percent. They're adding to the shadow. If you if you've got arams in this case, you are losing six percent on the. Uh, well, you'd be losing eighteen percent technically on the uh, occult, which sucks. But you got boots. You got the prayer now. You got an offhand. It's not bad, man. Not bad. I like changes. It's good for PvP builds now. I'm happy. Yet though, the void waker doesn't fix its problem in PvP, which is what I thought the main issue was. I thought they were leaving the void waker in PvP and only changing it for PvM. I thought they were leaving it. Um, so it guarantees hitting PvP. That that's what I thought they initially said. I didn't realize they were changing it in, entirely across the game. But I mean, I don't know. I, I thought the problem was PvM because they they pretty much hit a wall with what they can do for special attacks. But to be honest, like this, like with a four hundred percent accuracy on the Void Waker, you're going to be hitting zeros almost never. Still, you you you're, you're going to hit. Like, you're, you're going to be incredibly fucking accurate with that thing still. It won't really matter. You'll you, you barely notice the difference. Now, did the Void Waker learn for PvM and adjust it for PvP? Is that the problem? Do you think? Shadow dropped 30 mil for some reason. Probably because Ancestral dropped. Oh, who, who invested in Ancestral and now is losing money on it? I just wanted it to be 55% spec or not whack 45s without spec. Yeah, because it's pretty much a whip, isn't it? it? It's it's slightly worse than a whip, isn't it? Um, just as a normal weapon, which is why I take it into Cox. Because it's it's great on, like, Vasa crystals and shit if you don't want to, like, stack up heaps of gear. You can just use it there and use it in mutts and stuff. And still slap with it. 55% um, spec's probably not a bad shout. I don't know. No. What if you change the Void Waker, use a higher spec percentage? Yeah, well, if they went 55 or 60%, it's not an entirely bad idea. Should be 55% for PvP only. No, nah, no, nah, I think... I think... I mean, I, I don't know. Do you think it should be across the game? Not sure. Made a quick 3 million on boots. Very nice. I invested in Eternal Boots and Augury, and now I'm very happy. Good man. Endgame Gatekeeper update. Best quote of news posts. Yep. Pretty much. Alright, cool. Pun wants to dance at the end. Here's, here's your dance for YouTube. Make sure you like and subscribe because mum's gay. There you go. Would you be sell Christmas crackers? I don't know. I don't invest in them. It's got nothing to do with me, man. This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him. God damn. Fuck me. Look at that boy. It's huge.